Hello and welcome to Critical Care Nursing, How to Identify and Treat Cellulitis. My name is David Woodruff. I am the editor of Critical Care Nursing Made Incredibly Easy. I hope to make this incredibly easy for you too. Let's talk about cellulitis. Cellulitis is an infection of the skin that can be painful and lead to life-threatening sepsis. So where is this, what does it look like, and where does it come from? Well, it's a soft tissue inflammatory reaction that's occurring as a result of infection or inflammation of the subcutaneous and the dermal layers, so those upper layers of the skin. The majority of the ones that are non-purulent and uncomplicated are the result of beta hemologic strep or of staph aureus. They can be classified into three different classifications, acute, subacute, or chronic, depending upon how long this cellulitis has been occurring for that patient. Most frequently, they're associated with trauma. So about 60-61% of cellulitis is the result of some kind of traumatic injury. However, we get about 18-19% of them from patients who have HIV infection. Their immune response is lowered, a little bit of bacteria gets underneath the skin, and it causes infection, where in other uh, patients who do have an intact immune system, that would not be a problem. Alcohol consumption is associated with cellulitis, as is tobacco use. So when we look at our patient and we see that they have red legs, they have redness in their leg, there's two things to look at. Could this be a venous insufficiency or could this be that the patient has cellulitis? So we're going to use this New Haven score system. These are the pieces that we're looking for. A new onset, so this isn't a chronic kind of condition for them. We're looking for that redness. We're looking for the warmth or the generalized fever. A history of trauma. Remember that 60-some percent of these are the result of a trauma of some sort. Aching. It's unilateral. Where in a lot of cases of vascular disease, it's bilateral. So unilateral tends to mean that it's probably not vascular in nature. And then the number of white blood cells. We're going to see an elevation in our white blood cells as a result of this inflammation or infection. So what is our evidence-based treatment? First of all, we want to swab it for a culture to see if we can identify what the organism is. It doesn't always result in a positive growth of uh, bacteria, etc., because the infection is underneath the skin. But if we do have some drainage here, we may have some bacteria in the drainage or we may see some bacteria on the skin that is also part of this infection. Mark the area around the redness so we can follow it and see if it's getting bigger or smaller. That's going to be marked with a single-use surgical marker. Penicillin, amoxicillin, and cephaloxin are going to be our antibiotics of choice. If we have a really severe type of cellulitis, we may need to have surgical debridement or an incision and drainage that may be necessary and pain management because these, again, are painful types of infections. Complications include necrosis. About 30% of the time, we may end up with necrosis. 23% of the time, this could lead to sepsis. We have bacteria. It's under the skin. It's very vascular. That bacteria then gets translocated to other parts of the body, and we end up having sepsis. Abscess formation can occur and ulcer development. So in order to avoid all those complications, we want to treat this as quickly as possible. So here are the references for this presentation, Dr. Botler and Associates and Dr. Edwards and Associates. A couple great articles here to help you to be able to really hone in on which patients have cellulitis and how best to treat them. Thank you for joining me for Critical Care Nursing, How to Identify and Treat Cellulitis. My name is David Woodruff, and until next time, bye-bye.